Michael Canaan is a man apart. So far apart that this season he's already ridden more than twice the number of winners than his nearest rival in the Irish jockey's table. And this despite a delayed start to the season on account of his Hong Kong commitments. Whilst Michael is a flat jockey in demand all over the world, the name Canaan is equally well known in national hunt circles. When Michael was just starting his career, his father Tommy steered the much-loved Monk's Field to victory in the 1978 champion hurdle. I was just started with Liam Brown my first season. And um, I was actually uh, watching the race in, in Diggs in Kildare, waiting to go back to work in the afternoon. And uh, it, was the, it was the start of my racing career. Really. Four years before his father won the champion hurdle, Michael had his first ride in public on a one-eyed horse called Mascari. Larry Green was a friend of mine, and I used to ride Larry's at the time, the jumpers. And uh, he had a few good flat horses at the time, which I needed a horse called Muscari. And I had ridden him a couple of times, a mile and a half. I was second on him in, in a mile and a half at Clamell one day, and then I rode him in Gordon Park, he ran away with me. And then he went through the fence. So he had him in an apprentice race in Leperstone one day, a mile and a half, and he said to me, do you think Michael will be good enough to ride him? Of course, I said, that's a big step. I said, uh, so I said, let him go up and ride him a few times and see what you think. So he used to go up and he at the weekend and he rode him and got on well with him. Now, he wasn't an easy horse to ride, he had only one eye. But uh, I was trying to educate him at the time, you know, setting out in the, the world as it was. You need some bit of education. He was always very competitive and he, uh, he sort of, he never wanted to be second at anything, no matter what it was, you know. Um, he, he certainly always took a very serious, you know, certainly the riding part of it. And not like most young lads in the yard, where they'd be around messing and trick acting and that. You know, there was very little of that going on with him. He'd be too interested in what he was doing, you know. Since those early days, Canaan has forged some important links, most notably with Dermot Weld. Between them, they've enjoyed many championship seasons and evidently have a healthy respect for each other. Dermot, what qualities make Michael the complete jockey? Um, natural ability, confidence and the will to win. He's got them all and uh, he's a highly intelligent man. What impresses you most about Dermot as a trainer? Oh. Take me more than five minutes <laughs> for that one. We'll, we'll come back to that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right. he's uh, great attention to detail and he, he everything is off the top of his head. It's all in there. He never has to look at lists of where his horses are running. There may be barren row, list holes. He knows them off by heart. He's just um, he's a great operator. In 1990, Weld and Canaan combined for an unprecedented feat when Go and Go became the first European-trained horse to win the Belmont Stakes. It was a tremendous race and a tremendous thrill for both of us. Um, we were not expected to win the race because no horse had ever come from outside of America uh, to win it, never mind uh, the loan to win on the dirt. But um, Michael had the horse beautifully positioned throughout the race. He was always well within himself and um, certainly from the home turn, I had no doubt uh, that he was going to win. Stan, as an owner, how important is it to retain a jockey of Michael's standing? It's absolutely a vital important. The difference he makes to a horse is all the difference. And it's, it's uh, I mean, Michael is a very dedicated jockey, great rider, great judge of pace, and he assesses himself afterwards, self-assessment, which it makes us all suffer a lot. But Michael, Michael makes mistakes or things he does, he assesses himself afterwards and he corrects it the next time if there's something there. But he's, he's out to win, he's, he's a great man the way he keeps his weight, I mean his attention here and every twice or three times a week, uh, ride and walk for Dermot, I mean he'd ride 20 or 25 horse in the morning. And I, I think, I mean, it means everything, it means everything, everything. And I believe he's the, I think he's one probably one of the best Saturday's chapters in the world. I'd, I'd, I'd put him in against that meeting. And I hope he stays here next year, stays with us. And I asked him if he'd stay with me until I depart the life. So. <laughs> the ability for self-criticism and attention to detail has not been lost on other trainers. In 1989, he stepped in for the ride on Carroll House in the Ark. I went to the Ark that day um, 
really, I didn't think he had a big chance, you know. Um, he struggled to win at the Phoenix Park on fast ground. But um, we went to uh, went along Shomb and they had a lot of overnight rain. And we're sitting in the in the way room, all the jocks started going through the race and, they were, you know, they were what might win or may not win. And they all started coming back to Cow House because he'd like to go. And I said, oh, maybe I'm <laughs> in here with a better shot than I thought. And uh, it worked out that way. The following year, Henry Cecil had two entered for Sheikh Mohammed in the King George V and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes. Retained jockey Steve Cawthon opted for Old Vic, whose participation was in doubt right up until the morning of the race. Canaan rode Belmays. You've assumed the nickname Super Sub in some quarters. How do you react to this? Well, it's just something that's sub of stock, but I don't consider myself a substitute for any man. It's been very obvious to all the Irish race scores and everybody watching television in Ireland that Mick has appeared as one of our top riders, especially for the last 10 years. He's been my main opposition and my biggest threat to, to everything. And. Uh, his, his, his hunger for success is, is unreal. He's, in, in the last four or five years, he's happened to get on the best horses. And he's proved to the world how good he is. In my opinion, he's the best rider in Europe today. And uh, he's just he's just unbelievable, difficult man to beat, full of, full of confidence, just a great rider. For the past few seasons, Canaan has split his time between Ireland and Hong Kong, which is fast becoming one of the most popular venues for jockeys. Despite the reputed fickleness of some owners, Canaan has been just as popular in the colony as he is in his homeland. His decision to turn down the retainer offered by Sheikh Mohammed may have surprised outsiders, but not those closest to him. Michael had agreed a contract with me for that year. He's a man of his word and he duly honoured it. He's also a person that loves this country, is very happy here. And if you tie in his connection with Hong Kong, it didn't surprise me that he turned down the offer. It came at a very difficult time. Um, I had just sort of made the decision to split my seasons up uh, with Hong Kong and here and, and the family life had had to break up as well. And um, I didn't really want to leave here unless I had to. And the uh, contract wasn't as good as people might surmise. And there were, I thought the, the operation was a little bit disjointed and I thought it would be the most difficult year to have the job. And in the wind up I said, I'd stick to what I was doing best. The wisdom of that decision has been borne out by the events of this year, nor has it prevented Canaan from picking up spare rides at the expense of others. They're inside the final furlong, but Opera House for Super Sub, Mick Canaan takes it up, Missile is flying at the net, Tenby finds reserves and stays on, but Opera House is going to lift the coral eclipse, Missile rallies close home, Opera House and Missile, a photo Opera House and Missile. Commander-in-Chief of Mick Kinnan on his fifth derby ride, clear by six to Blues Traveller and Dorothea, and staying on best of all on the outside is Blue Judge, up toward the line, the commander's in charge, Commander-in-Chief takes the derby from Blue Judge second, Blues Traveller in third. Looking to the future, is there a situation or a change of situation that would tempt you to base yourself outside Ireland, do you think? Very unlikely. Um, very happy about the way things are going at the moment, they couldn't go better. I'm riding for, for Dermot, big string, and, and I have John Oxus with the Aga Khan. And it's a, it's a huge pick of, of horses. Um, it's one of the best jobs in Europe. So I'm um, unlikely to move away from it unless they sack me. <laughs>